hello everybody and welcome back to my channel in today's video we have the review of what's this the new Kempi Master MiG 205 and yes you see correctly <laughs> I have a Kempi a MiG Kempi machine which I never ever ever thought I would ever see the day where one of these would be in my garage but there's one reason, one important reason why I bought this and that is because it's a single phase welder machine that does pulse. Can you believe that? A pulse single phase MIG welder. So I am gonna be testing it today. I'll be running it through a bit of pipe, a bit of thin stuff, a bit of thick stuff. And I'm basically gonna run it through its paces and see how good it is at being a plug and play machine. 2023 we're not trying to dial in machines anymore we want it to just be able to work first time and always I don't want to be worrying about wire speed and voltage anymore so initially looking at it the machine's not too big it's not too small it does run a five kilo spool of wire so you have to bear that in mind but at the same time for it being portable you don't want to be lugging a full size 20 kilo spool it's got LEDs on the front. I'm sure it has a use. I don't know what I would use them for. I'm not working in confined spaces or at night. Also, the screen. So it's plugged in. I'm going to switch it on for the first time and see what the operating system looks like. Decent. So it's loading up. Yes, English. I don't know what that means yet. Wire, gas, material, ferrous material. 0.8 mil wire. My gas. I'll try this one. Wow, these dials are absolutely solid. They take a lot of force to actually rotate. I'm gonna get back to that in a bit. First of all, I'm gonna check out what goodies it comes with. Liner, consumable tips, the wire wheels, and feeder power adapter and the torch so it's a five meter torch which let me verify yep 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 if you're ever gonna get something like this five meter is the way to go you don't want to be messing around with a three meter because by the time you've pulled the three meter torch away from the machine the sag it doesn't sit on the floor so you're constantly got tension plenty long gas hose with a quick release so i've got these quick release connections and the pack comes with the adapter that i need for it so there's a debate going about which is better to have these small reels on the inside the five kilo spools or the full size 15 kilo rolls which I can grab for you now this here is a 15 kilo well this is alley wire so it's a lot lighter but these are the size difference in the so how much kilos is this one here this way is seven kilos but in mild steel you can get them to 20 kilos and this here is a five kilo spool now the straight up issue is you'll be carrying around 20 kilos before you even pick up the weight of the machine so for me i've got a fronius welder i'll show you it a little bit later and when it's fully like a brand new spool it's a struggle to pick it up you get them disco legs as they're shaking all over the place i believe I believe it would probably weigh in the region about 50 kilos so this here is much more controllable of a size to have oh no the balls fell everywhere what did he say so let's see if I can adjust this I want to put the right roller wheels on it so yeah there's different size rolls these ones here what size are they so three different rollers and uh, and they basically grip the wire and feed it through i'm usually a bit destructive to my tools but not always 
pretty cool handy little light inside red 1.0 and I do wish that it was able to open this up a bit more just because I got I got big hands no I don't I've got normal size hands but it's just too tight to uh, mess around with down here looking at them a little bit closer on the back of it if you can see it's gonna be real difficult there's a symbol that shows that it's a U groove this one here is a V groove The hell? 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. So red V is one mil. Yep, we got that. Orange is 1.2, but orange is a U groove. So that's for Ali. Okay. So now I want white 0 0.8 mil wire. I'm assuming that it goes this way, but I reckon I'd have to put the top one in first. Drop that in, poke the pin through. Here's the feed wire at the bottom. Put the pin in, clip it, sorted. I know that you're meant to have the tension quite high for this stuff, but I'll adjust that later on. See, this is so fiddly when it's small like this. Normally I use pointy nose pliers to help me out. I'm trying to feed the wire through and it's getting jammed up here. Hence why the collar piece that went inside or the sleeve piece, can you see now? I've pushed it through. Now maybe I'm doing it right or maybe I'm doing it wrong, but it should. There we go, go inside there. So next I need to make sure there's a liner inside of this. So yes, there is. So I've got a spare liner. I reckon that's for the alley, alley wire. It is for the alley wire because it's plastic so it doesn't contaminate the wire as it goes through. This is a nice little laser cut tool. I wish I there was a pocket, cubby holes to store things on this machine. It's a nice solid connection right here. There has to be a setting on here for inching the wire through. And let's see if I can find it. Remote start wall. I'll turn the gap off as well. Oh, I just changed over the gas setting to 8% CO2 mix. And now we're in pulse mode. So there's manual where you control the, the voltage and wire speed. Here's MIG-1, which I'm assuming would be like a synergic setting where you change the amps and everything else automatically adjusts. So at low power, it's a dip transfer. And then when you start going higher and higher, it turns into a spray transfer without turning into pulse. I'm gonna do a crude drawing of what I believe pulse welding does to give you a bit of an understanding of it. So here's, here's a, a normal sine wave. Here's your digital sine wave. And these points up here is when things are on. So in pulse welding, things are on for these periods. And the pulse is obviously as it goes up, it pulses and then you don't use down at the bottom half i think you use a bunch of diodes that only give you the top half because it's not an ac frequency so you don't use the bottom it's only top so the settings you adjust is obviously how high it ramps up to which you, you could be the amps um, the top part here is the duration and your hertz would be how often this happens so um from my understanding, these gaps in between, these pauses, they, they mean you don't put so much heat into the workpiece and it allows the piece, the weld material to solidify, which also um, allows you to weld out of position as well as 
gives you a whole bunch of different weld characteristics. Um, what Synergic is, which is just continuous across the top, one continuous power. So that there gets you crazy penetration, but some of the problems are you can't weld out of position because it's just liquid and things will just drip down. So Pulse is a happy medium. I would say if you're gonna do any pipe welding, Pulse is an absolute must if you wanna do any degree of, of quality work. Now this is me talking from my own bias and experience, so I hope I'm not giving you lots of misinformation, but for, for me, I wouldn't trouble anything unless it's Pulse. Hence why I bought this machine here, because under the table, I have, I've got my, my Fronius machine underneath here, but it's only a Synergic machine. So it goes into spray transfer and dip transfer and globular transfer, but no pulse. And um, the cleanup is crazy when I'm trying to do pipe. So I hope everyone's enjoying this video and is actually impressed by this little welder machine just like me to kind of emphasize a little bit more about this machine. It's a single phase pulse MIG welder that can do, you know, MIG, TIG and stick. I think with the TIG, obviously you'd have to play around with certain connections to make it work, but you can do it all. I think it's got a 40% duty cycle at 200 amps, but honestly, it's not designed to be running at full power. 200 amps is usually like the generic kind of max power that a lot of these machines run at like even my AC DC TIG welder maxes out at 200 amps it's like pretty much the max for domestic plug sockets here in the UK we run 230 volts and um, most plug sockets are fused at 13 amps so if you do run this machine continuously it will it will get the plug socket hot and it will trip out the machine that's just what happens at in, in UK houses there's just no way of getting around it unless you um, connect a I think a 32 amp breaker straight to your fuse board and then just have it running from there then you can obviously run it on way higher power so, but then you only have to what worry about the I'm duty cycle of the machine but all machines have duty cycles there's no getting away with it so I'm not gonna knock this machine for for its duty cycle the stuff that I do I've not had it trip out just yet so that's good so the main selling point for me um, while buying this machine was pulse and it's light lightweight small size but pulse was the, the main selling point for me if you've never used pulse you don't know what you're missing out on pulse is just such a clean powerful weld uh, look at this right now this is pulse you can hear the noise the quality of the weld is just unbelievable so that was one of the big reasons why I bought this machine another reason for this purchase was the small size I um, I was sick and tired of, of lugging that Fronius welding machine around um, I don't know if I said it in the video but it's about 50 kilos I mean you you to carry it you have to literally step over it reach your arms down lock your elbows and just lift with your legs and just waddle with the machine it's that heavy so um, yeah this machine I think is like 17 kilos which is significantly lighter and for a lot of the work that I'm doing it is perfect here you can see me do a bit of pipe welding look, look at the root that was like a 6g um, I think a vertical down pipe weld and look look at it look how clean the pulse weld is obviously this thickness is too thick for the power but this is just a scrap that I've got the machine does absolutely everything that I need to that I need it for for the welds that I'm doing now. Of course, understand they have their limitations. There's more powerful versions for in like workshops and stuff like that. But for single phase domestic power, I can't recommend anything below this spec. If that makes sense, it's it's I I, just, I know what I know what machines are capable of and. Um, I'm only going to be messing with things of my caliber so I can't recommend eBay welding machines or anything of that like because I just don't want my name attached to it quality is the only thing that I'm going to be attaching my name to no and problem. this here is quality look, look what I'm welding now I'm welding a bit of filler wire together look how crazy stable that arc is so if you're interested in this machine links are in the description 
full disclosure i bought this machine but i have been in talks with where i bought it from and there might be some things down in the pipeline let this be a visual representation as to wow that's hot i shouldn't have done that let this be a visual representation as to how dialed in this machine is or maybe not dialed in i should say how controllable this machine is look at that i'm going to test out some flux core wire I don't know what you would use this process for. I refuse to learn it. Absolutely hate gasless. So I hope that sample of weld that I've just done will let you understand the capabilities of this machine. I try to avoid this touching the floor at all costs. So I'm just gonna wrap it up, store it to the side, slide this side all the way through. Plastic liner, of course, doesn't contaminate the metal, the, the alley wire when it goes through. This whole thing here is a is a bad... No, nope, I'm an idiot. I'm about to cuss it. There's two different pieces. There we go. I still stand by what I was about to say, though. This is just too fiddly, so small. It would have been better if this whole piece come out. I can show you the Thronius one, what I'm talking about. Underneath the table is my Fronius welding machine. If I come to this side. Phone torch it is. Look at my home screen here. <laughs> oh yes. Here you go. See how much room you've got there? Feed the wire through. Nice and easy. More rollers so it's got more grip as well. It's just a easier design to, to get access to. But there is... There is a lot more space underneath here as well. So the video is going to be wrapping up soon. I've just got a demonstration of Pulse MIG alley welding. So yes, nice. You know, this, this machine is versatile and can do pretty much as much as you want. So this is going to be my exclusive MIG machine for MIG things. And I'm going to have a TIG welder to do TIG stuff. So it's fine having two different machines this this does enough on its own that i don't need to worry about connecting tig torches and stuff to it so here's a, just another a feature i like on this machine is what's called across. weld assist basically a whole bunch of presets already saved on the machine you just input what type of weld that you're doing thickness and all sorts and the machine takes care of all of the settings and stuff like that it's a nice feature you know it, it allows you to um get the machine mostly dialed in to what you're trying to do and you just need to do a few little adjustments to um, get it to suit the type of welding that you're doing so no review is complete without sharing the cons of the machine i think it's only fair i've been praising it for so long you know you have to hear the the negatives that was one of them the way how they was playing the wire i i don't know why there was i didn't investigate too much but the wire could slide back in the in in the in the liner or somewhere i don't know like i said i didn't investigate hopefully something that i've just missed and it isn't really an issue but what i can foresee being a being a problem is um you know when you go to r cup and it burns the wire back and it's able to burn back so much wire that when you're feeding it through the rollers there's enough tolerance and play that it doesn't it doesn't keep forcing the wire into the molten pool and it just keeps burning back, if that makes sense. So then you get just a, a, a terrible start on your weld. I haven't really had that issue, but that's that's what I'm worried about. Um, another con, obviously, the how fiddly it is to, to change wires out and the rollers. Obviously, you won't be doing it too much, but it's, it's too small. It's too small. And then another pet peeve is really nothing is um, how long the machine is once you've screwed on the torch. 
So the machine, I'm not too too sure how long it is. I didn't quite measure it. Maybe a couple hundred mil long, 500 mil long maybe. But then the torch adds almost the length of the machine on the front of it. And where it's like solid, you, it's not really flexible. It just makes the machine a little bit a little bit long. But that's nothing really. You, you deal with that. What you're going to be left with at the end of this video is um, two different videos that will be linked in the description of in in real world welding with this machine one of them was um the pipe and this one here is is welding up some um cars these are my two previous youtube videos i believe they're going to be linked below if you want to check them out it's not really a, re a review of the machine but it's me using the machine but yes the, the video is going to be wrapping up i appreciate you lot you know following along check the description there will be links to everything that you've seen um Yes, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.